And now, from Emu's World, somewhere in the heart of England, comes... Emu's All Right, Nick Windmill Everybody to our pink wimble. It's lovely to be back again, isn't it? Hey, Emu. And we've got everybody here. Are you all ready for the show, you lot? Yeah. Yes! And we've got the television cameras to be broadcasting live, and our pink windmill kids are around here somewhere. Yes, what, what? Joe's doing his recording. Shh. Joe's doing his recording. Shh. Shh. Joe's doing his recording. Shh. 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 As you listen to the band, don't you get a bubble? <laughs> As you listen to them play, don't you get a glow? You step out on the floor, you forget your troubles. If you go into your desk, you forget your woes. So come get together, let the last one feel your leather. Step as lightly as a feather, let's not go. Come hit the timber, loosen up and start to limber. Can't you hear that? Let's not go. Let's go, relax, and let's not go, relax. You guys sound tired of being a nut. The night is cold, but the music's hot. So come, kind of closer. Don't you dare to answer no, sir. Put your makeup club on board. yourself at the pink windmill. <laughs> well, not for long! <laughs> I am concocting a new magical potion that will get me into that pink windmill completely unnoticed. <laughs> oh, yes, I am! No one will see me. Now, I just need a couple more ingredients. And what are they? Um, here from the head of a crocodile and a smile from a robot. <laughs> Where are my two stupid assistants? Redford and Croc, come here immediately. That'll do nicely. And a smile from a robot. <laughs> smile. Smile? What, me? Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. I haven't got one in me at the moment, no. Smile! Well, I just can't smile to order. I mean, a smile has to be motivated by a, by a, a happy event or something. Smile! Oh. <clears throat> oh, there. Now I'm completely <coughs> exhausted. Oh. How quiet, you two. 
I call upon the powers of chicken pot. And measles. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel! <laughs> right! That does it! I'm going to go off into another room and finish this spell. And you two can get on the hover grot and get down to that pink windmill. But, but Mrs. Grot Bags, you weren't antiperspirant. Aren't you coming? Oh, Croc! Croc! I shall already be down there. Yes, among the brats. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> yes, and that streaky bonehead Rod will give me that lovely little Amy Weemy. <laughs> and then you and Redford will bring Emu back here. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. This is the bestest spell what I've ever done. <laughs> We must do as her mighty majestical commands. Oh, I can't wait. Unnoticed, she said. <laughs> this I've got to see. Come on. Yes, come out of it. We're back here in the pink realm where it's time for Emu's spin quiz. But will you come out of it? I only want you to pick out one or two letters. Thank you very much indeed. Because as you can see, we've had so many letters. Excuse me a minute. So many letters from everybody who got oh, the question right last week, which, as you know, was what did what was the fuel that King Boggle used in his rocket? And nearly all of you got it right. It was fruity fizz pop. And uh, we've got a letter here, which is always oh, a very nice letter. It's even got a drawing of the of the pink windmill on the front. Look at that. And inside. It says the answer, yes, Boggle was going to use Fizz Pop to help him with his rocket making. And this comes from, from Geeta Ahir in Southall in Middlesex. So Geeta, we should be phoning you up in a minute. As you know by now, we phone you up and we ask you a question, don't we, Emu? If you get it right, we spin the wheel for you. In fact, Emu spins the wheel for you. If it lands on any of these numbers, then you could win some super prizes. Prizes like this. If you're lucky, you could win this great remote control car. Thank you very much, Peter. Blue eyes, but black hair. <laughs> you find out the answer in Guess Who? Very well done, wasn't it? That was well done. Very good. That was our luck. Come on, let's see. You're very good at doing that. <laughs> this is Miss National. Well, actually, it's Abby, but I, 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 I call him this national. <laughs> Thank you very much, Abby. And, of course, and what about if we spin the wheel and it lands on the sails? Ah, then you're in for a treat, because you're in for our star prize. Star prize! Star prize! Star prize! And the star prize is this fabulous black and white television. And, of course, we can't conduct this quiz, can we, without the beautiful Miss Whitlock. Yeah. Come on, Emma. How are you? All right? I'm right, thanks. Right, now, we've got... We, we've pulled out one. It's Geeta. Geeta are here in Southall, in, in Middlesex. So would you like to dial her up? There's her number there. OK. And whilst we're doing that, we'll just explain once again what happens. We, we ask you the question. If you get it right, then you get a spin of the wheel. If you get it wrong, well... We can't. We, we we have to be fair, don't we, Emu? So what we do, we send you a nice, nice pink windmill T-shirt. Thank you, Emu. That's lovely. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Yes. No, I no, I don't want any more. I don't want any more. Thank you. Yes. And then we'll also get another consolation prize of a badge. No, that's nothing. <laughs> I was wondering when we were going to have one of those days. <laughs> Looks okay. like it. Yes. Try it again. And I'll sing them a song. <clears throat> Come get together. Here for my new sound. Now don't start laughing, it's not that funny, is it? Come up here. Also, you'll be receiving as a consolation prize this beautiful book of poetry written by this idiot. Um, this uh, this chap. And whilst we're waiting, I'll read you one of the magnificent poems that's in it. It's, it's all about the gnus. If all the gnus in all the zoos disappeared forever, you'd have to say that's the end of the news. Hello, she's on the phone. 
And now it's time for the weather. Pardon? I'm on the phone. Are you on the phone? Yes. Is that Geeta? Yes. How are you? All right? Yes. Good, I'm so glad. Are you watching the show? Yes. Somebody's watching the show. That's good, isn't it? Well, we're going to ask you a question. Oh, you're age, what, 11, aren't you? So we want, we want a question for an 11-year-old. Right. If you make a preserve out of several oranges, what is, what is it called? If you make a preserve out of several oranges? Seville oranges. Seville. Seville oranges. If you make a preserve out of oranges, shall we say, what is that preserve called? Have you gone? Orange marmalade. Orange marmalade, of yes. course! Yes! Very good! Yes. And we're going to spin the wheel, right? Here we go. There! Number number 19. I'm sure number 19 is a super prize, Geeta. Let's have a look. Yes, it's a styling brush. A styling Yay! brush. Great. Come on, then. Let's have a look at it. Is that it? Yes. It's nice, isn't oh. it? Oh, I see. It's all electronic, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can do your hair with it. You must get yourself one of these. Emma. <laughs> there we are. Thank you very much, Miss National. Uh, that's going to go over to be sent off to you at the Pink Windmill Post Office. And thank you very much indeed for, for playing our game. All right, Geeta? Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Right, if you want to enter the spin quiz, we should be asking you a question later on in the programme. And then at the end of the programme, I'll, I'll tell you where to write to. In fact, I'll tell you now it's, it's to this address. Emu's All Life Pink Memorial Show, Central Television, Lenton Lane, Nottingham, NG7 2NA. <laughs> Twin schools in this country with schools in Australia. That's quite right, and it is an exciting. And we've got a lot of mail, haven't we, Alex? Yes, we've had a lot of, of mail from mail what from, from the the last, last school. Week's yeah, show. last week's school. Well, as you can see, it's going to take us at least a week to get through all this. So, would you? If you don't mind my saying, don't write into the schools that we've already shown you because we've got enough mail to sort through and try to get them twinned up with those schools. Instead, why not be watching the show this week and every other week that we're doing it to find a new school that perhaps your school might, might be twinned with. And what about this one over here? I think this one today is a very good school. It's called Glebe High School. And, you know, Glebe is right in the middle of Sydney Harbour. In fact, it's on the banks of the harbour. And there's a super school. What a lovely outlook for a school that one is. Yes, it's a secondary school is it? with about 150 pupils. Really? Mm. And they all fit into that school, so it's quite nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's going to be good. Well, there you are. You've seen the school. If your school is on a sort of similar lo location, you know, on a, on a river or something like that, and well, in fact, you might even do extra special lessons like sailing or something like that because, yeah. because I'm sure that Glebe High does. Yeah. So, and, and you think that your school is a suitable one to be twinned with that one, then why not drop us a line right here at the Pink Windmill and mark your envelopes, Twin, twin Schools! schools. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me Alex, I'll just go and see what's going on over here. Oh, let's go and have a look at all the people we've got in our audience there. Are you all right? Yeah. Yes, you're, you're all right too, aren't you? And you're all right, aren't you? I haven't seen any, all these people yet. Oh, here's a little girl. Oh, oh, we've now... Hello, little girl. Hello, hello. And what's your name? My, 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 my name is Gertrude. Gertrude. Gertrude, Gertrude. This is Gertrude, everybody. Mm -hmm. Isn't she nice? Hello. Do you like coming here? Oh, yes. I have a lot of fun coming to the Pink Women and seeing all the brats, I mean, all the children. I have a lot of fun. Mm. What's the matter, mm. Sally Gertrude? Mm. Well, you're very pretty, Gertrude. Thank you, yeah. thank you very is much. Is there anything that, that, that you, you, you like to, to do, you know, dancing or anything like that? Oh, oh, I'd love to hold Emu, please. Oh, well, that's oh, all right. I really would. It would be so exciting. Listen, I'm sure that you'd like, like little Gertrude to hold you, wouldn't you? Show me, show me. Right. Oh, let me hold you. Let me hold you. It'll be all right. Oh, there. There. Come on, Gertrude. 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 Come on,
can we go for a walk now? No, no, you can't go for a walk, you see, because we're, we're doing the show. Stop. I want to go for a walk, streaky bonehead! Hey. I've got him now! Hey, I've got him! I've got him! Come on, I've got him! I've got him! Come on, I've got him! Come on! Some, somebody get drop bags, don't just sit there. Oh, come on. Don't just sit there. I've got it, get you. Get drop bags. Help. I've got him. Get off Brexit, Croc. Help. Get off, you little bit crook. Get off, Melty. Help, you. Help. Get off. Now, Brexit. remember, she oh. said that she would be unnoticed. So that means we've got to find her. Right, Mrs. Grubbags. Mrs. Grubbags. Where are you? Mrs. Grubbags. You've ruined my plan now, you horrible brats! Just for that, I'm going to take three of you back to my grotto! Watch this! Bazaar! <laughs> and because you were so greedy last week, I am now going to hold my elimination game. Do you remember what it was? Hey? Got bags, got and you've got a ball, haven't you, with a number on it? And the number is the same as your seat. <laughs> and you mustn't throw the ball until I say so. Right? Aim at him, you satchel. The first three balls in are my victims. On your marks. Three, two, one, throw! <laughs> Why don't you go over and watch this while we're sorting all this out? Bazaz! <laughs> Is. I think he's gone off to get some cabbage water. But anyway, I'll just fill up the kettle so we can have a cup of tea because this is where we like to sit down and watch the adventures of all those people who live in another part of Emu's world. I'm talking about that part that's completely surrounded by an invisible screen, Boggle's Kingdom. And it's run by my great, great ancestor, Good King Boggle. Such a stately looking man, isn't he? <laughs> While Ugjob John is building a rocket and Boggle is preparing to go to the moon, Hortensia is planning to rule in his place. Unbeknown to either, Prince Paul's army is encamped on the outskirts of the village. Watch on! looking contraption. Shh! That must be his rocket. A rocket? Yes, the thing that's going to take my stupid cousin up to the moon. Oh! Here, begging your pardon, sire, but don't you think it's about time we started the invasion of Dreamy Village? No. Are you ready, men? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, shh. Shh. No, you dare not move yet. We must wait until Boggle gets into the rocket. And be quiet. Right. Wait until Boggle gets into the rocket. And be quiet. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I think these bushes are bringing on my allergy. to this, my dear. It's another one of my brilliant thoughts, you know. As soon as I could do my breathing in it. Because supposing when I got up to the moon, the moon hadn't got any breathe. Not at all. I couldn't hold my breath and give a speech, could I? So I borrowed that from the suit of armour on the hall. I'll bring it back, I promise, and I'll 
I'm going to call it a space helmet. Boggle, you are so clever. It's easy to see why you are king. I've got to get going now, I suppose. Just, just get this in. Oh, yes. Oh, fly me to the moon. Oh, fly me to the moon. Oh, I'm going to the moon. Council meeting. That's what we'll have. I can't wait! Over here, Your Majesty! Your Majesty, over here! Not long to wait now. Oh, not long to wait now, men! Oh, yeah. Shh. As soon as that stupid cousin of mine gets into the rocket, we'll run into Dreamy Village. Shh. And take over. Yeah! Uh, shh. 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 Oh, very smart, Your Majesty. Thank you. <laughs> this way, Your Majesty. Oh, dear. Hot chop chop. Oh, oh, a beautiful rocket. Oh, you've done your king proud, you know, John. Thank you. <laughs> well, Your Majesty, I'd better explain a few things. Oh, yes. yes. This back section here yes. is the fuel tank, uh, full of fruity fish pop. <laughs> All systems go. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. Now, look, I've shaken the rocket oh. so it's all primed and ready to go. Yeah. Now, when you give the word, I shall pull on this rope, which is attached to that bung. Oh. When the bung comes out, yeah. that releases the gas and gets you to the moon. Oh, very technical, John. Lucky I understand all this, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, A-OK. -okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Your Majesty, if I could just draw your attention to one other thing. On the other side of the rocket, there's a second bung. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, with a piece of rope attached to it. Yeah. The end of that rope is inside the rocket. When you get back into the rocket, you pull on that rope, that releases the bung, out comes the gas, down to Earth you come. Oh, God, it's going to be a very proud day, you know, for Dreamy Village. I think we should get going. The wind's about right. <laughs> Where are you? This way, Your Majesty. Yeah, yeah. This way. We, we have lift up. Lift off? I'm not on anything. Oh, get in, Your Majesty. All right, Your Majesty. All right, John. Good. Now, there's nothing to stop me from taking over. <laughs> Charles! <laughs> So the invasion is on. With Boggle out of the way, it should be an easy task for Paulie's men. And little does Hortensia know what is in store. Be watching next week. Yay! Anyway, why don't we go and play another game of Emu Spin Quiz? Yay! Yay! But over there drinking cabbage water. Thank you very much, Spencer. Did you know it was Spencer's birthday today? Yeah, I did. Yeah, our, one of our pink windmill kids, Spencer, who just seen. He's got a birthday, isn't he? Little... Yeah, oh, we must about to do this, haven't we? Got to do this. I'll just pull this one straight out of the top of the sack. I hope it's all right. Um, yes, and it's it's got the right answer. King Boggle was going to use bottle of fruity fizz pop. That's right, isn't it, to make his rocket go to the moon? And this is from thank you. This is from Kirsty, age six. And she's even drawn a little picture there. Look of of Boggle's moon rocket with all the all the bottles of fruity fizz pop. Yeah, and she's 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 also drawn uh, another picture here. Look, hey, she's drawn a picture of a lighthouse with a foghorn and a radio beacon, and she's put a little message that says, "This is where I live." She actually lives in a lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, she does, and it's on, it's right up there in the Shetland Isles. Ooh. 
Well, if we couldn't get Southall, we've got no chance of getting the Shetland Isles, have we? Um, well, we're going to try and phone you right now, Kirsty. Whilst Emma is phoning you in, up there in the Shetland Isles, I'll just remind you of what you can win if you're happy, if you're lucky enough to win our Star Prize. Star Prize! Star Prize! Star Prize! You can certainly watch Emu on this, this brilliant Pop TV. Woo! <laughs> Staying happy, and, and <laughs> it's a long way through to the Shetland Isles, isn't it's ringing, it? Though. But it's ringing. I don't suppose they've got a phone in the lighthouse. Yeah, really? Hello, is that Kirsty? Yeah. You're right up there in the Shetland Isles. You you were up there in the Shetland Isles. Are you up there still? Yeah. Yes, I can just about hear you. Can you shout or you, use the foghorn yeah. or something? Pardon? Yeah. Yes, that's good. And you're age six, are you, Kirsty? Yeah, I can listen, be quiet. Uh, and we've got a question for you, all right? Yeah. Yes, all right. Finish this well-known proverb. A bird in the hand is worth two in the... Got that? A bird in the hand is worth two in the... Bush. Bush, yes! Yes, yes you got it right! Yay! Yes. Spin the wheel for you. There we go. Oh, stop, didn't it? On oh, number oh, ten. Number Never mind, Kirsty. I'm sure number ten's a lovely number prize. Kirsty has won a doll. You've Yay! won a doll. How about that? Yay! Thank you very much. Got it? Yeah, it's Kirsty. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes, that, that is for you, all right. Mm -hmm. I to, uh, would you come over to the pink windmill and yes. post it off? Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Oh, uh, uh, Kelly, what, uh, sorry, Kirsty, what's it like living in a, in a lighthouse? Damn cold. Damn cold. Is that what you said? <laughs> Damn cold. I'm sorry? Damn cold. Oh, yes, I bet it is cold. <laughs> But can't you run up and down stairs to keep warm or something? So I just realised what I said. Yes. I don't live in a lighthouse. Sorry? I don't live in a lighthouse. You don't live in a lighthouse? I thought you did. You just drawing us a picture of one. You said I, I this is where I... You live in the little house next to the lighthouse. You live in the little house next door to the lighthouse. Oh. Yeah, thank you very much. That's lovely. <laughs> OK, darling, well, we've got this, this lovely dolly coming on to you. And I'm sorry about that, what I said just now. Good luck, and thank you very much for uh, being our, our super little game, uh, our super prize winner on this game. Bye, love. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And if you want to play this game, you've got to find the answer to this question, which is, what was the name that Grotbags used when she sat in the audience? as a little girl. All right, if you think you know the answer to that, put it on the back of an envelope and send it to an address that we should be giving you later on in the programme. But right now, it's time to go over to... The Pink Windmill Post Office! the lovely pictures that people have sent us. This one is from Melissa Blake from Kent and she's six years old and I think it's lovely. She put a lot of effort into this. Thank yeah. you very much. And uh, so on to our letters this week and a particularly sad one from uh, Paul Lindley and he's aged five and a half and he writes, Dear Rod and Emu, my friend who lives in Yorkshire, a place called Sowerby Bridge, does not like your programme. Oh. Um, because her name is Michelle McGrotty. Uh, so everyone calls her grot bags at Aww. school. Well, thank you, Paul. And uh, because you read out your letter, we'll be sending you a pink windmill T-shirt. OK? Uh, and we certainly feel sorry for poor Michelle. Yeah. So we'll send her one too. Yes, why don't we? 
Uh, yes, I'd like to say thank you and I'll send a T-shirt to Julie Hall uh, for <laughs> sending us a lovely letter. Uh, she's from um, Camberley in working. I mean, working in Camberley. And, working a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she sent us a badge for Emu and a badge for Rod. Rod as well, yeah. And um, she says, P.S. I hope Grot Bags doesn't get you. Mm. So do I. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Well, to prove that we do do our job, uh, answering your letters and dispatching them, that we, when we get them from the Pinkmore Post Office, we've got a letter from one of our prize winners. And uh, she won the Star Prize, which was a BMX bike in our last series. And her name's uh, Tina Flippance. There she is on our bike. And she sent us a letter too. And it says... Dear Rod and Emu, I've had great fun on the bike I won on your last show, except that my brother was always trying to ride it. A lot of people have been admiring the bike since I got it. Uh, your sincerely, uh, Tina Flippance. Thank you very much. <laughs> Finally, we have a, a letter that um, asks Rod and Emu to do something, and it's from Mark Flavel, or Flavel. I hope he's got it all right. Mm. It's, he's 12, 11 years old, and he says... Dear Rod Nemu, I have a friend called John who keeps birds, and I help him sometimes. He's got to get two of his birds ready for a show, and it'd be great if you could come and help us, especially Emu. Well, I know what happened here. Rob went off arm with talcum powder to dust their little feathers and nail clippers to trim their nails. You see, what he didn't know was, well, he thought they were budgerigars, but when he got there, he was in for a big surprise. Come on, I'm over here. Where? Them? Well, yeah. Well, where's your... F oh, here he is. Here's John. Hello, John. Hello. Nice to see you, John. You are. Well. Th these are the birds, are yes. they? Crate them up. Crate into them the, up? Yeah, into these here. Into these crates? Yes, yeah. so put them on show. And put, that's Around the show? The pod, yes. Put them on show in the zoo. Is that yes. show? Yeah. Oh, well, I won't want this yeah. towel compound then, will I? No. Oh. Uh -huh. Come on, then. Let's, let's go and get them. Come on, then. There. You've got to go to another part of the zoo, you know. Yes. Would you like your nails clipped? Because I've got the nail clippers here. Um... Well, as you can see, they weren't exactly little budgies, were they? No. <laughs> and uh, they didn't have much success either. No, hours later, he was still trying to get them into the boxes. Oh, dear. <laughs> no, this way. Come on, Tiggles. Here's one. In there, in that little box. Excuse me. Come in here. It's ever so nice, isn't it? That's right. Just round here. Here we go. In there. That's it. Just a minute. Put some of that in there. Um, oh, um, with those nail clippers. I've got them. Here they are. Here you are. Cut your own nails. We're off. <laughs> Typical. 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 Well, that's it for the Pinkwood Post Office this week. And remember, if you have any pictures or letters you want to send in to us, or write anything about the show... Or if you want Rodney to do something out of the ordinary for you, then here's the address to write to. Emu's All Live Pink Windmill Show. Central Television, Lenton Lane, Nottingham, NG7, 2NA. Hey! Let's go over and see our three friends over in Grotbag's Grotto. Grotto, once again, the only show where Princess Diana said, Who? Yes! Now, Redford, explain the game to the brats down there while I have a look in yes, the cold. Yes, I will, I will. Now, I'm sure you've all seen it before and you'll remember, but just a quick refresher, we've got five grottos and there are five cauldrons in the grottos, and in those cauldrons are five prizes. Now, I have to tell you that there are some lovely prizes and there are some Booby prizes. Because I put them in. She did. Ah! She put some booby <laughs> prizes in. Now, what you've got to do is choose a number, take the cauldron and bring it to Mrs. Grotbags, and she'll bargain with you. Now, you can decide to take either the prizes she offers or keep what's in the cauldron. All well, right? let's have a victim. Good. Come on. Let's have number let's one, have a please. Victim. Come on, Croc. That's it. Who's this? This is Eloise. Hello, Eloise. Hello, Eloise. There we are now Hello. then, Eloise. You have got five to choose. That's it. Turn around that way. Five to choose one, one to five. Pick a number. 
three. Number three. You go and get number three, Eloise. She's got number three, Mrs. Grotbags. Yeah, Miss. Right. Some Give that to Mrs. Grotbags. Grotbags. You come Thank back you, here Eddie. because I'm going to show the boys and girls at home what's in the cauldron. <laughs> Right. Now, now, Eloise, oh, instead good. of having that cauldron, I will offer you a beautiful game of Cluedo. Oh, that's nice. Cluedo, you see? Lovely game there. You can play with lots of friends. You play detectives and, with friends. And you can Look have something really fantastic. I am now immortalised. The Emu's World Storybook. Oh, look. You see? Nice. And there's Streaky Bonehead there. And there's Little Grotty. Yes. Look. And show we're all inside. Show a, Red, show a Redford. It's show a Redford's Redford picture. Redford isn't in there. But Croc is. You see, my favourite little Croc. And, of course, of course, I give you an e Oh, no, I won't. I'll give you my dog. It's a bar lamb. My dog. It's a it's dog. A, it's a bar lamb. Don't argue. It's a bar Yeah, bar lamb. All that for your cauldron. What are you going to do? You can take those or you can take those from the cauldron. I'll tell you what. And you knew too. What do you want? Do you want those or do you want the prize that's in the cauldron? The cauldron. You want to take the cauldron? She's going to take the cauldron. Quiet! 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 She's taking the cauldron! You don't want any of this. Right? You know what you've won? You've won a cold chip! Oh! <laughs> Well, you go over there. I'm sure Croc has, Croc has got something for you over there. Louise. Just you look. Right. I, why, do, so why do we give away T-shirts when they've not won anything? T-shirt. Oh, that's go. nice. Yes. Look. Lovely. Look. Very nice. Ooh. There you are, Well done, Eloise. And a badge. All right. There we the go. Can we have lovely. contestant number two, please? <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two. Next victim. And this Come is along. Let's get on Faye. with it. Hello, Faye. Now you've got four to choose from. You've got one, two, four, or five. It's a very nice chip. Hurry up. Number five. Go number get number, number five. five. That's the one. Bring it to me. Yes, over there. Let's show the boys and girls at home what you've won. Right. Now, right. Faye, I'm not going to muck about now. I'll give you. I'll give you some sweeties. I've got some sweeties in here. Like sweeties. So do I. Amy's World sweeties with lots of pick and stick up things and nice. what's it? And I've got a lovely. Oh, Guinness Book of Records. Oh, right. And a news book. A news book. Well, a news book. Down. You can have all that, right, for your cauldron. What are you going to do? Come along, quickly. We oh, haven't got all day. Come on, make your mind. The cauldron. The cauldron. Quiet! 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 Oh. You want the cauldron? <laughs> you know what you've won? She's taken the cauldron! Be quiet! Oh, I've got such a headache today. So strong. You know what you've won? You've won an electronic oh. organ. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 You can't get good luck, Faye. That's lovely. Can we have the last contestant, please? I hope your batteries go flat. It Hello, never Claire. plays a decent note. This is Horrible. Claire. Hello, Nothing. Claire. 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 Turn Hello. around this way. You've got three to Go and get a cauldron One, and hurry up. One, two, or four. Got number them, four. She's getting number four. All right, she's getting number four. Right. Right. It's missed again. Put it on there. Let's show the boys and girls what's in the cauldron. Right. right. Here we go. Now. Oh, it's exciting. La -dee -dee -dee. I get more excited than the contestants. <clears throat> Do you like blowing up things? Ooh. Magical potions with a chemistry set. Do you like chemistry? Right, I'll give you that. Hey. And. Yeah. Hey, isn't it? And. A lovely packet of crisps. Oh, fattening. Always wanted to do oh. this with a packet. Always wanted to do that. I don't want that now. I'd better you? give her something else now. Yes, then. I should think so too. Goodness me, I should have to clean that. Lovely out. tin of beef and kidney. Oh no! Oh no, that's Crocs tea! <laughs> oh, I'm getting myself in a tis what's me. I'll tell you what. That's an Emu chew. The cauldron. Do you have to do something else? Okay.
You've won a beautiful Polaroid camera. Oh, 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 I'm not having this game oh, anymore. This I'm finished. Go on, what's nice the nice to finish choice? something nice. I'm fed up with all my good fun. Yeah, well, here we are. We've got Emu's Choice, and this is a particularly sad one this week because it was, well, it was when you got, you got taken away by grot bags and put in a bo box and taken to that awful witches convention. Do you yes, remember? Yes, this is the one in Boggle's Kingdom, isn't That's it? That's right. Yeah, and everybody else got through the invisible screen, and we couldn't. That's yeah, and Rod right. really told us off for the first time about not believing yeah, in fantasy. Yeah. Right, right. Well, that's what happened. Well... It's because you're growing up. You don't believe in fantasy anymore. Well, I do. And because I do, I've still got hope. Hope that something might happen. You see, when you rush around in hopeless circles, searching everywhere for something true, you're at the age of not believing. When all the make-believe is through. When you set aside your childhood heroes and your dreams are lost upon a shelf you're at the age of not believing and worst of all you doubt yourself you're a castaway where no one hears you on a barren isle in a lonely sea where did all the happy endings go? Where can all the good times be? You must face the age of not believing Doubting everything you ever knew Until at last you start believing There's something wonderful in you. Hey, look! I've done it! I believe that I got through! Come on, try it! this week but if you're living up north we should be in Middlesbrough on Saturday and in Doncaster on Sunday with the Emu Road Show. See ya! Bye! Bye.